Hey, it's Brock here with Rock Hill Farms, and today we're going to give an overview of the Mahindra 5155. And I've got to say, after doing my research yesterday and then spending the last hour with the salesman for Mahindra, there are a lot of things I didn't know about this tractor and about Mahindra tractors in general that make them an interesting tractor to look at. So I've been going around comparing 50 to 60 horsepower tractors from every brand and looking at all the pros and cons. So far, I've looked at the two Japanese tractors in Kubota and Yanmar. I've looked at the three Korean tractors in TYM, LS, and Coyote. And then I looked at John Deere. And keep in mind when I say the country like that, I'm talking about where the company is and where the engineering happens, not necessarily where the machine's built. Mahindra is an Indian tractor. They are one of several, and in fact, they're the largest tractor manufacturer in India, and they're one of the three largest volume tractor manufacturers in the world. I believe they're number one and sell more tractors globally than John Deere or Kubota or anybody else. Uh, their rank in the U.S. market is not that high in sales, but they have been selling tractors in the U.S. market for a long time. So the first thing I want to say about my comparison is that Mahindra does not have a direct comparison for the other ones I've chosen. Every other brand, it was very easy to find a 55 horsepower cab tractor with a hydrostat. And they, they were very similar machines in terms of the basics of the design. This lineup does not have a direct comparison for that. If you want a hydrostat and a cab tractor, the biggest one you can get is 40 horsepower. If you want a shuttle shift, and a cab tractor, you can get this big 75 horse here, but it's definitely a utility tractor, way bigger than anything else I've looked at. The only thing that's the same physical size and the same horsepower that I've been comparing is the 5155. Now the salesman was adamant that we describe this as a utility tractor, but when it's the same size and horsepower as the compacts I've been looking at, it's, it's in that gray area between the two. So that's the first thing that makes Mahindra unique is they don't have an exact match in the lineup. The next thing that makes you Mahindra unique is that their tractors do not have a regen system. The whole time I've been involved with tractors, what I've heard over and over and over again is that any tractor over 25 horsepower has to have a regen system, which means it's got a DPF filter that clogs up and then burns off. This tractor has nothing like that. So the way the Mahindra dealer told me how to describe that is that there are three ways to pass emission standards. And the government does not require you to pass those standards a certain way, they just require you to pass them. So you can do that with DEF fluid, diesel exhaust fluid, which is urea and water that gets squirted in and reburns. Then you can do it with a DPF filter where you have a reburn. Or you can do it with common rail fuel injection. So this is a common rail diesel. And I'm no expert at all on diesel engines, but the explanation I got is that it's the fuel is injected more precisely so it doesn't waste as much. And it lowers emissions that way. I'm sure there are a lot of people who can give a better answer than that, but that's the answer I was given. But the bottom line is, this tractor has no regen. It will never need to shut down and regen or have that light come on. I've also had someone tell me that the, this system is actually more complex with more things to go wrong because the fuel injection is controlled by a computer. And, you know, once again, I don't have the expertise to say if this is better or worse. I'm just telling you everything I know about it. Now, if you're wanting to say, Stop talking and show the tractor. Trust me, we're going to walk around and show every bit of this tractor. But one more comment I had about the difference with this machine is that this is by far the heaviest machine I've looked at. Most of the other tractors are 3,800 to 4,500 pounds. Is the, I believe the heaviest thing I've seen was 4,500 pounds. This Mahindra weighs 5,390 pounds without the loader. That is a heavy tractor. And he said that the way they build them in India is a lot more steel, a lot heavier duty on the frame and the axles. 
This is information from the salesman, but what I do know is that their listed weight is significantly heavier than any of the other tractors I've looked at. This tractor also has more lift capacity, quite a bit more. And if you're, you're saying, well, it's a utility tractor, it doesn't feel bigger and it doesn't cost more. So I think it's the best comparison I can make with Mahindra. Now, when it comes to price, which we'll do at the end, it doesn't have a cab option, so it's, it's hard to compare price. But let's take a look at physically the tractor and how it's set up. Now some of these things are standard on every tractor, so it's almost pointless to say it, but I'm gonna go through the same routine. We've got a removable loader. There's the kickstands. We've got skid steer quick attach. Everyone has that but John Deere because they have their own setup. Now in terms of this being a utility tractor, I will say the, the hood is probably that much taller but you know to me that's just not what defines it to me it's the footprint the the size of the wheels and the uh, capabilities but actually normally when they no longer offer hydrostat i start to call that a utility too but this loader has a 3300 pound lift capacity and the highest i've seen was 2800 so they have the highest lift capacity of any tractor we've looked at. After I left the dealership, I was trying to think of a tractor that actually compares directly with this one in terms of the frame size and the capability. And what I came up with is the TYM 5835. Now when I tell the price on this machine, keep in mind that the 5835 is $32,000 today at the tractor yard. I've talked about several other brands and how heavy their loader enforcement is, but this one's the biggest and the, the toughest looking to me. So this loader mast comes, look how heavy that gauge of that steel is. That comes all the way up to the front and it goes all the way up and hooks up under the rear axle. Extremely heavy built. A couple of people have mentioned I should talk about the engines. I don't have the expertise to do that. I believe this is a Mitsubishi engine, which is Mitsubishi is a tractor manufacturer also, and Mahindra owns half of Mitsubishi. So you could say they make their own engines. I think these tires are just a little bit larger, even though I said they were the same. On the back, it's got a nice feature that it's category two or category one hookup for, the, for your implements. It's got a really heavy duty draw bar. It's got a hingeable PTO guard, which I like. Same as all the others in this class, you've got the telescoping stabilizers and the extendable draft arms. It does appear from looking at it here, like it's got draft control. That's why this point right here pivots, whereas mine is fixed. Looks like you can offset your drawbar position by moving these pins if you want your drawbar to pull over to the side. This setup is very heavy duty. The axles are huge, front and rear, the reinforcement. I can see why this tractor weighs so much. You've only got one rear remote on it. I would like to have two minimum maybe three on a tractor this size, but anytime we look at that, just keep in mind that can be added to pretty much any tractor. It's just cost you're going to have to put on top of the price that you're told. Same thing, they, Mahindra has a third function for your front hydraulics, for your third function, but this particular dealership usually installs the WR long kit because it's more cost effective for the customer. You would notice on the other side, there is no step, but this side has a double step. Our fuel fill is the same place. Uh, in the last video I did, a couple people complained that it was a stupid place to put a fuel tank because it was a disaster waiting to happen. Well, I noticed that this one has a skid plate around the fuel tank. I also kind of said if your fuel tank doesn't hang down as low as your axle, then you know, you're probably not going to hit it running over something and you're not probably going to have a side impact either. So I didn't consider that to be a big concern. 
It's an interesting location for this filter. It really sticks out where it could get hit, like if you rammed a piece of brush up here. I do think every one of these tractors needs to have a real grill guard. It's not an expensive thing to add something that protects brush from stabbing up into your radiator, but not a single one of them puts it on there from the factory. I've been saying this tractor was the same size, but when I go to step in it, I can tell it is taller. So these tires are going to be bigger. I've been comparing the numbers, but they've got a different numbering system on them. It's still a 24 inch rim, but the other two numbers are different. 440-80, it's a different numbering system. Now, with that extra height, they give you a really nice grab handle and two steps to get up. All right, as I get up in here, keep in mind that this is just me looking at it. A couple of people told me I made mistakes. I'm going to do that. I'm going to misunderstand things sometimes. Okay, so here you've got a PTO selector switch for 540 or 540 economy. This is very different. Normally, you've got a little electronic control for turning your PTO on. This is a long movement of a lever. I have never seen that before. Not saying good or bad. How would I know? It's just different. Okay, we've got this uh, automotive style parking brake. I am a big fan of that. Some people don't like it. And we've got our four wheel drive engage here. Three ranges here. And our four speeds here for a 12 speed shuttle, power shuttle. Of course, here's our three point lever. I'm just gonna tell you what it looks like to me. This looks like your three point lever. And this looks like a way to quickly raise and lower to a set position without moving your lever. So if you want to run it at a six, but on different passes, you want at the end of the pass. So if you want to run it at position six, but then quickly say at the end of my row, I'm going to raise and lower. That's pretty convenient. I hope that's what it is and how it works because I think that would be a nice design if it is. We've got a throttle pedal here, besides of course having a throttle up here. Here's your forward and reverse lever. Your lights and hazards, there's no regen button like we would normally find. And we've got the clutch here, your split brakes here. Honestly, for the size of the machine, the operator station feels a little bit small. See if I, it's just the position of the seat. Okay, yeah, the seat's all the way back, and I am pretty close to the steering wheel. One thing I forgot to mention when we were looking at the three-point is the three-point lift capacity, which is 3,800 pounds. That is definitely the highest number I've seen. So this tractor has the most front lift capacity and the most rear lift capacity of anything I looked at. It's heavier. It seems to be really well built. Now let's talk about pricing, and I'm gonna repeat what I said at the beginning. This is not a direct comparison model, and that's because they don't have a direct comparison model. This tractor is slightly bigger, same horsepower, more capacity front and rear, but the price-wise, the big difference is everything else I priced had a cab, this one does not come with a cab. Everything else I priced had a hydrostat, this doesn't come with a hydrostat. So there is no fair comparison, but the only other comparison I could have made would have been to a 40 horsepower tractor that lifts 1,600 pounds. That's not a fit for me. It's not in the same ballpark. So pricing that hydrostat with the cab just doesn't apply to the series of videos I've been doing. So this tractor right here has an actual list price of 43,000, but the current price is 37,000. So I don't know if they if it's a sale or I bet always they're, they're selling below MSRP. So 37,000 is a, right in line with the cheapest tractors we've looked at. But if you want to factor out the cab, you're probably spending $10,000 more than the TYM. So I would say these fall in the middle of the pricing range. Now I haven't given you a complete and perfect review. There are things about this tractor that matter that I don't know. And when I come here, 
I don't try to be 100% authoritative. I try to tell you some things that maybe you don't know that might be interesting enough for you to drive down and find out for yourself if you're shopping. But I will say this is not just another copy and paste of the same design. Mahindra has their own design. They engineer it themselves in, in India. And it seems like a pretty stout machine that would move some logs and cut some brush and do all the work I needed. So, you guys seem to be enjoying this series. I thought you might be getting tired of it, but I keep getting requests in the comments, do this model, do this model, do this model. So I'm going to try to do a couple more. And then I am going to end up with a bigger tractor. So I appreciate you taking time to watch the video. I'll put links on the screen to a couple more of our videos, and I'll see you next time.